first, live, local. Fox 19 Morning News continues with Sheila Gray, Rob Williams, Dan Carroll, and first weather meteorologist Paul Horton. Now here's Rob. A lot of people got an iPod uh, for Christmas and over the holidays. They were selling like hotcakes. I mean, I was going to stores all over the place. They were sold out. Finally got one at the Apple Store up there in Kenwood, as did a lot of other people. Now that you have your iPod, where do you get your music? How do you work your iPod? What if you're not computer savvy like most of us? I joined you this morning as internet expert, Dave Hatter of Libertas Technologies. Dave, how are you doing? I'm good, Rob. How are you? First of all, this is like the big thing, correct? I mean, this was probably one of the biggest things to come out, especially for Apple. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, it's very simple to use. It's small, it's convenient, and, you know, across the board, MP3 players have been very hot, and the iPod is definitely at the head of the pack. And it's the head of the pack because, I mean, it has got that thing that it's like one of the coolest things you it's, can have on your person, correct? It, it's cool looking, and one of the things that Apple did that was really smart is they made it very simple to use. Right. That little, I mean, it depends on which model you have. You've got the Nano, you've got the Shuffle, and you've got the full-blown right. iPod. The full-blown iPod's got that little thumb wheel thing. Right. You know, it's pretty easy to use, and it's pretty cool. Okay, let's go to web, uh, websites where you can get some of your music. The first one is iTunes. Yeah, I mean, if you have an iPod, probably the biggest knock against it, in my opinion, is that Apple has made it difficult to use an iPod with any other music service except iTunes. Okay. You can do it. You can download music from some of the other sites I'll show you, but then to get it into iTunes and onto your iPod, you have to burn it to a CD first, which causes it to lose all its track information. Right. And then you have to put it into iTunes, and in most cases, you're probably going to have to enter the track information again. So, like, who's the artist, what's the album, and all that kind of thing. Because there are other, uh, iTunes, of course, the easiest way to go about it, but it's more expensive than some of the other websites out it, there where you can get music, correct? It, it's more expensive, and, you know, each, a lot of these sites have their own licensing agreements, right. so the artists that are available will vary widely. I've got iTunes on the screen here. You can just go to apple.com forward slash iTunes. If you have an iPod, this is without a doubt the easiest way to get music for it. But more expensive than some of the other ones you're going to show us. And What's the next one you're going to show us? Well, Napster has gone legal. You know, at one time, Napster <laughs> right. was it's the... a renegade. Yeah, I mean, they started the whole online file sharing thing. Okay. You know, they're legal now, and they mention on here, I wanted to pull this up because you can see it explains why iPods don't work with Napster and what you can do about that, like burning it to a CD. And, and what you're saying is some of the other sites you're going to show us, I mean, you have to actually get the music, download it to your computer, burn it to a CD, and right. then put it back on your computer. Yeah, but you could download that music and listen to it on that computer, but uh -huh. if you want to get it on an iPod, you have to go through this additional step. I understand. If you're not using iTunes. Okay. Walmart sells songs for 88 cents. They have a pretty good selection. I've used this site personally myself. So that's 11 cents cheaper than iTunes, am I right? Uh-huh. And Yahoo also now has this really pretty outstanding music service as well. And they also explain on here, you know, why it doesn't work with iPod and, again, how you can kind of work around that issue. So if you have a non-iPod MP3 player, right. any you're other fine. brand, you're pretty much good. Okay, let's talk about this. Now, iPod, of course, was selling like hotcakes, selling out all over the place, especially during the holidays. But there are a number of other MP3 players out there that does basically the same thing. Right iPod has that coolness factor, but it's very restricted it's, in what you can do or where you can go. Right. They've kind of built a proprietary closed system to make you sort of subscribe to their music, which I don't blame them. And, right, it, sure. and it works pretty good. But there are MP3 players from another of other manufacturers, Sony, Dell, any number. I mean, you can buy one. We, we bought my son one that was a non-iPod because, uh -huh. frankly, they're less expensive and they're more extensible in how they can be used, in my opinion. But so. I'm telling you, Dave Hatter, you would not buy an iPod. I wouldn't because I'm not willing to pay the extra money, nor am I willing to be locked into <laughs> right. using iTunes without all this hassle. But if that coolness factor is very important to you, iPod probably the way to go. Uh, definitely. Right. And, and, I mean, they do work well. I'm yeah. not really knocking the player. It's yeah. just not as convenient as I would like for it to be. I understand. You know what? You can get Dave Hatter at Libertas Technologies. I mean, if you're having a problem on the Internet, uh, you can reach him at 859-261-9700. And, of course, we have all the links that Dave just told you about at our website, box19.com. Dave, all the best to you. Thanks, Rob. All right, man.